Hi, I'm the Rap Critic, and this was a request by Nuparu1. And if you'd like to make a request, go to my Rap Critic Kofi page, where a one-time donation of $30 to $60 gets you locked in to request either a movie, album, or music video for me to review. As well, you can join my Patreon and do the same, or just join for $1 per episode created and get to see those episodes early and join my Discord channel. All those links are in the description below. So, let's talk about bragging in hip-hop. Now, as we all know, the genre as a whole was rooted in rap battles, which are all about building up how awesome you are and how whack the other person is. So, as far as rap was concerned in the early 90s, there wasn't a ton of room for vulnerability. Sure, hip-hop has always been rooted in struggle, and there were always songs where rappers would talk about their problems in relation to an unfair system that he and people like him had to live under. But, you know, they still wanted you to think they were cool. Like, let's not get it twisted, even the socially conscious public enemy and KRS one type rappers still wanted you to think they were badasses for bucking the status quo when giving you the harsh truth. And for rappers who do detail their struggle, it's usually portrayed in a pretty serious way, or, or at least in a way that shows how they pride themselves in their resilience and getting over their shortcomings in life. But absolutely none of that bravado was present on Skilo's I Wish, his smash hit song from 1995. I wish I was a little bit taller, I wish I was a baller, I wish I had a girl who looked good, I would call her. This song is specifically about yearning to be cool, desperately hoping for the good life while being woefully disappointed with reality. And the music sets the stage pretty well, with two incredibly well used samples. One from Shantae Moore's Love's Taken Over, a soft, harmonious, high pitched sample in the hook that I could swear was the sound of someone whistling. But nah, it's actually the original singer's voice. I wish I had a rabbit in a hat with a bat and a six form bar. And the way it's used here to function like a carefree whistling sound, it invokes that sort of lazy Sunday, sitting on the dock of the bay type feeling. It really helps make the song sound like a daydream, as the rapper imagines a radio station he can call where all his wishes would be granted. And the other song is from a sample called Spinning by Bernard Wright. Hey, this is radio station WSKE. which plays under him when the radio station intro call happens. Almost as if the sample actually is one of those songs radio DJs play in the background while they're talking. We're taking calls on the wish line, making your wacky wishes come true. We then get into the verses proper, about a guy who not only wishes for a more successful life, but wallows in self-deprecation over just how much of a loser he feels like. I got this hatchback, and everywhere I go, your wife gets laughed at. When it comes to playing basketball, I'm always last to be picked, and in some cases, never picked at all. One can imagine how such a starkly different attitude on a rap song might have caught people's ears. But hey, I guess he figures if he's gonna make a song about being a loser, damn it, he's gonna be the biggest loser ever. He doesn't have a nice car, he's not cool enough to get the girls, and he is cripplingly self-conscious about being short. Seriously, it's not just an opening line, you can tell it's a bit of a sore spot for him. Illustrated succinctly by the cover of him with his hands sheepishly in his pockets, looking longingly at the rim of a basketball hoop his fingers no doubt have never touched. Also, there's the fact that he spends almost the whole first verse talking about how inadequate his height makes him feel. My boyfriend's tall and he plays ball, so how am I gonna compete with that? I wish I was like six foot nine so I could get with Leoshi cause she don't know me, but yo, she's really fine. Although, pretty cool internal rhyme scheme to start off with. And using a pretty unconventional sounding name too, like, it always grabbed my attention when I heard it, especially at the beginning of a verse like this. So uh, I looked it up and found out he was apparently talking about a girl he liked who was actually half black and half Asian. And you don't really hear rappers talk about Blasian girls that much, so you know, it's an interesting switch up. Not that it matters for him though, since, you know, the song's about how he can't get the girl. Dad, y'all, I never understood black while the jocks get the fly girls and me, I get the hood rats. Oh, wait, so I guess he can get girls, but just not the really hot ones? Kinda goes against the fact that the song's about what a no-ass getting loser you are if you then turn your nose up to the ones who aren't up to your standard. I'm such an absolute loser, no girl would ever give me a chance. Well, I was actually gonna go to a movie later if you wanted to join Well, me. not you, hood rat, ew. Now, where was I? Oh yeah. <clears throat> How come the super hot Blasian girl who already has a boyfriend won't talk to me? Why, God? I tell him scat, skittles, kebab, got hit with a body. Mess. Maybe you'd do a better job with the ladies if you didn't dismissively shoo off the ones you don't like. Shit, they probably think you're crazy kids to keep shouting nonsense at them. Skabob, look, it's not even a word. And hey, some of those hood rats might be friends with the Laoshis of the world, man. I mean, dude, girls talk. Just saying, a little self-awareness might help you out. They definitely get girls to stop throwing bottles at you, that's for sure. And as long as we're talking about the flaws of the song, some of these lyrics feel awkwardly underwritten. It feels weird to say, but some of these lyrics come off a little too self-deprecating, to the point where he comically overplays his loser status a bit much. At certain points where it seems like he's almost inviting you to make fun of him. And you wanna know what's really whack? See, I can't even get a date, so what you think of that? Why would you even ask that question? 
Because by this point in the song, we're pretty well aware you're not getting chicks. Like, do you really want to know what the rap game at large would think of a guy who can't play basketball and has no car and no girl? I mean, I'm sure one word definitely comes to mind. No! Even parts of the hook kind of throw me off a little. So, okay, he's wishing he had a magician's hat. That'd definitely be useful. Then he wishes for a nice car and a, a bat? Like, you want a baseball bat or, or like an actual bat? And, and why would either one of those things be something you daydream over? Baseball bats aren't that expensive. And alternatively, how many people would want an actual fucking bat in their house? So with both options, it just feels like a weird thing to bring up. I mean, unless you account for the fact that it, he, you know, just said it to add to the rhyme scheme, of course. I heard that prom night is a mom night with a hood rat chicken old type of Uh... Thought he didn't like hood rats, but uh, okay. Huh? This doesn't make any sense. He's saying, I wish I was a cool guy getting laid on prom night, but instead he's Figaro and can't get anyone to talk to him? Like, are you talking about the famous opera character? So you're saying you can't get anyone to talk to you, but the song everyone knows about Figaro from that opera is literally about how everyone keeps calling his name because he's so popular. Then again, not everyone knows that, I guess. I just happen to study music for my degree, so, you know, that's my classically trained schooling at work. It almost pays for itself! Except, except for the part where I have to pay back the tens of thousands of dollars. But, but enough about me, let's get back to the song. Yo, you know that's on the real. So if you down on your luck, then you should know just how I feel. The song about having no money and wishing things were better, right. Unfortunately, though, the song really runs out of steam by the end. Like, he just kind of rips lines from that Buffalo Springfield song for no real reason. Hey, you. What's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. And then he ends the song with a couplet that doesn't even try to rhyme. Ah yes, ain't that fresh? Everybody wants to get down like that. You clearly could have said everybody wants to get down, I guess, there, and easily made that rhyme. Like, not only is that a tepid way to end the verse, but you couldn't even rhyme it well? It's a minor thing that always annoyed the shit out of me about this song, but it's like, come on, man, it's the end, it's the last thing we're gonna hear before the hook, you know, put some effort into it, man. Anyways, overall, I I'd give it a 2 out of 5. It was a breath of fresh air for its time in a way that I feel is important, but I wouldn't call it an untouchable classic or anything. I mean, the last part honestly seems like he just kind of gave up in the middle of writing it, but in a time that very soon was going to be dominated by the likes of the Maces and P. Diddy's of the industry, strutting around in million dollar suits and watches, it was a unique perspective for the time and gave us a more down-home, relatable face of what hip-hop could be, showing us a guy not afraid to lay bare all of his bad fortune, in a way where you're supposed to laugh at him while still low-key connecting to his woes, and for that, I think it deserves its props. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you liked because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe button and the bell because it helps the most. Oh, and by the way, we just did an interview with Vampside Norman for the Going Off podcast. Uh, if you don't know, he's one of Kendrick Lamar's cousins and made a really interesting vampire-themed album that I talked to him about. So if you want to get my merch, follow me on social media, listen to my podcast, or support the show, all the links are in the link tree below. So check all that fun stuff out, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.